up mushroom fam it's Gary with fresh from the farm fungi I'm here in Denver Colorado and I'm super excited today to do a product review on the new um, Myco geeky induction sterilizer so they were kind enough to send me one of these um, induction sterilizer to do a test video and just kind of go over my thoughts on how this works in the mycology lab and right off the bat um, I just want to say thank you once again the packaging was phenomenal um, they really wrapped this up and I believe it was overnighted from Ohio and it got here in you know 24 hours or maybe 36 hours or something which was very impressive and um, it came packaged with some little trinkets and stickers so I was super excited and um, I'm a huge fan already using this for about a week or so but I wanted to really test the limitations of this sterilizer um, just to see you know if there's any flaws or if there's any improvements that can be made um, I'll post a link to the sterilizer it's also on Etsy so another Etsy shop out there um, I really appreciate working with local um, you know craftsmen and people who I actually put a face to their company so that's another reason why I really like this product so far um, so a little bit of background on my techniques up until now so since the beginning of my mycology adventure I've been really against using open flames in the laboratory um, I had a couple instances back in my youth using open flames in the lab and I actually um, had an instance one time where a test tube um, got too close to an open flame and exploded into the ceiling and ever since then I was strongly against using open flames especially with um, the isopropyl alcohol that I use regularly and quite often during one single procedure so the peace of mind having this sterilizer here and not using an open flame is a huge positive to any mycology lab especially if your lab is at home like um, this lab is at my house in Denver right now so it's on me to you know really use the safest practice possible and fire safety is number one in my book so eliminating the open flame is a huge advancement for um, my mycology lab and the induction flame sterilizer is a way around that now prior to using this I have been um, sterilizing my blade handles in these little sterilization pouches and then I use fresh blades for a lot of things I still think that there's a lot of applications I will use this for um, just because I really like using fresh sharp blades for cloning mushrooms for example over um, a blade that has been sterilized by heat over and over again they kind of lose their their sharpness after a certain point but that being said um, I did a video reviewing this lab rats uh, mycology scalpel about a year ago and I really you know enjoyed using this blade however it's covered with um, some kind of silicone and I was always afraid of running it through the pressure cooker and it also didn't fit in my pouches so I kind of steered away from using these uh, lab rats by I think it's NOCO or something but um, if you go back there's a video that I did about a year ago on these blades and also utilizing um, this disinfectant here so it's a little bit of a different technique however I think that implementing these blades with a longer handle is going to give me the same results as using a steam sterilized um, scalpel and it's going to save these plastic pouches from ending up in the landfill and also it's going to save those blades over the course of the life of my laboratory here okay so that kind of goes over my preferred methods for doing my lab work 
so now I'll talk about the procedure that I'm going to set up here. So I just pulled out a bunch of um, Petri dishes from the fridge. There's a few of them with some condensation, but that's not a big issue. Um, and then I also have a few different mycelium um, cultures that I'm going to be transferring. So I want to do a few different types of mycelium so that if there is any carryover, um, we'll know that it was from uh, not thorough sterilization. Um, I didn't want to just use the same mushroom over and over again because there's no way to tell if, you know, switching between species, you're gonna have carryover of that mycelium. So normally um, I wouldn't sterilize between every single dish. I would only sterilize if um, I'm switching between species or phenotypes within that species just so I'm getting a consistent clone of that mycelium. So I'll start off um, just with an initial sterilization and then I'm going to do probably about four or five transfers per uh, culture here and all of these cultures have different mycelium morphologies. So um, for example, I'll start off with this King Strafaria here and it's got, you know, tomatoes, slow growth, very distinct on agar. And I'll transfer about four or five dishes um, from this culture, sterilize, and then move on to this lion's mane culture, which this one has really filamentous growth. It's very distinct on agar. Um, lion's mane looks completely different. And then I've got a couple more strains that have um, different very characteristic mycelium, um, the, the rhizomorphic mycelium from the rest of my strains is pretty obvious too. So I'll just go through, flip the camera around, um, and then I'll do a follow-up video with the results. Hopefully we don't see any contamination. Hopefully there's not intermingling between the two different types of mycelium. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Sorry if it was a little bit um, long-winded but I think that explaining everything up front will make more sense um, as you see the follow-up results of this video. So I'm going to actually wear a mask here um, just to keep things extra sterile. And then I'll flip the camera around so you can see a bird's eye view of what I'm doing here. Okay, let's get started.
Okay, guys, I am going to um, label these plates up, parafilm them, and put them in the incubator at 72 degrees for about four or five days. I'll keep a close eye on them to look for any crossover of the different mycelium types. But overall, that went really smooth. I think it's cool to have this product on the table. Um, I really like Myco Geek's uh, little ghost and mushroom nerd. So they got the marketing down, the packaging. It's the whole nine yards. And in my opinion, it's competing against um, a back incinerator or bacteria incinerator, one of the uh, ceramic induction heaters, which I've used extensively in the past in tissue culture. Those are really nice, but I never um, could justify forking over 500 or 600 dollars for one of those. And these are significantly cheaper. Um, I feel like there's less parts that could break on these, but I didn't really dive into the inside. That's not my forte. Um, just, you know, the time that it took to sterilize those blades was perfect. You could smell the, uh, the mycelium on that first blade kind of um, burning. So that's a good sign. And I'll uh, post the results as soon as we start getting these uh, plates grow grown out or the mycelium grown out on the plates. I'll post those results and um, release this video. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so it's been three days and the verdict is in on the Myco Geeky induction sterilizer. And it looks like we have 100% success. There's a little hiccup that I'll show you, which is just a technical error. Um, when I was making a transfer, I dropped one of the wedges not in the middle of the plate, and you can see the result from that. Um, but we also have our negative blanks. So just to prove if there was any contamination, that it wasn't the Petri dishes. So all of our plates um, look clean, and then I will go through the different transfers, and you can see that, in fact, all of the, the King Strafaria um, did not cross into the lion's mane, and then you can tell that the two rhizomorphic oysters um, didn't have any crossover. It's super apparent on the petri dishes. So I'll flip this around and go through kind of what I'm, I'm observing. Okay, so here are the King Strafaria wedges that we cut out. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, you can see that this is where this wedge fell onto the petri dish and then I moved it over. So that was just a technician error. But then if you look at the lion's mane wedges, you can see some spindly growth, not too much happening. But the fact that there's not this mycelium growing off of these wedges kind of proves that there wasn't any carryover. And then um, we'll look at our oyster mushrooms here, and you can see very clearly the same mycelium and then if we come over to this rhizomorphic strain here, we're getting a lot of rhizomorphic mycelium that looks much different than the king oyster. All right guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I'm going to post the link for this uh, sterilizer in the description below. So I'm going to be using an Etsy affiliate link 
Um, if you go through this link, I get a small percentage of the sales. The real um, credit deserves to be had with um, Myco Geek. So the person who actually manufactured this product is really onto something. Um, two criticisms I have though, or I guess two ideas for future renditions is if you could add a foot pedal option, that would definitely help um, with my workspace flow. Um, it wasn't a huge big of a deal to press the little button, but uh, a foot pedal might be a good addition, especially if I was more cramped with space and you know I didn't have that extra elbow room to push the button, but that's you know super nitpicky at that point. Um, another idea I had was to put a little tool holder on the side here without the burner so that I didn't have to set my tool down. It'd be nice to just have a holder that I could place in front of the flow hood while the blades are cooling. Um, other than that, I give this a 10 out of 10. Great product made here in the United States and Ohio. Um, so thanks again for letting me test this out. I'll have the link in the description and also um, check out our Amazon affiliate page. If you're looking for the rest of our products, we have a really nice organized store front now for Amazon. So check out our Etsy, um, Etsy shop, Fresh Fungi for cultures. Um, we'll, we're, we got some liquid cultures I'm about to pull right now. And then as soon as our breeding project's over, we'll have those up and going. I've been very busy this springtime, so um, I'm looking forward to the new facility and um, just keep on, you know, giving me feedback on these videos. I really enjoy making this content and I'm looking forward to uh, trying out some new products in the near future as well as continuing our experiments to kind of resolve some of these um, conflicts or not conflicts but just arguments or debates in the mycology world in general. Alright guys, thanks for watching and until next time, much love.